The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEP, Professor Mahmoud Yakubo, has met with resident electoral commissioners across the country. He gave a breakdown of the online registration of voters in a continuous voter registration exercise which started last month. The commission is getting ready for the physical aspect of the exercise. And the Senate today passed a bill seeking to establish the Electoral Offenses Commission. The passage of the bill followed the consideration of a report by the Committee on Independent National Electoral Commission Chairman of the Committee, Senator Kabiru Gaya, in his presentation said that the bill became imperative in view of INEC's inability to prosecute electoral offenders in accordance with the provisions of Section 149 and Sections 150 of the Electoral Act as amended. Mrs. Ms. Loretta Onochi, having, having studied her curriculum virtue and other relevant documents, followed by ex ex exhaustive interaction and around the petition against her nomination, which she responded accordingly, including attesting that she is not a registered member of any political party. That is a submission and the presentation of the report of the INEC committee the screen, Ms. Loretta Onoche, and others for the INEC rule. So the Senate is rejecting the nomination of Ms. Onoche as a national commissioner representing Delta State in the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The upper chamber is also setting aside the confirmation of Professor Sani Adam as INEC commissioner from North Central. The Senate made these decisions after considering a report from his committee on INEC, presenting a report of the screening of the nominees during the Tuesday, uh, today's plenary session, the chairman of the committee on INEC, Senator Gabriel Gaya, says Ms. Anoche's nomination was rejected because there is a serving INEC commissioner representing Delta State. He adds that approving a nomination will violate the federal character principle. Meanwhile, the nomination of Professor Sunny Adams as INEC commissioner was stepped down for proper investigations. Let's get into the conversation tonight, everyone. The People's Democratic Party has reacted to these to these uh, Senate's rejection of President Buhari's uh, nomination of Ms. Loretta Onoche, but it has caused a lot of outcry out there. Why and what is the situation now that uh, the Senate has rejected? We have tonight to discuss this matter. I have two lawyers in our Buja studio is Mr. Sunusi Musa, an APC member and a lawyer. Thank you so much, Mr. Sun uh, Musa, for joining us tonight. And uh, virtually, we have is Mr. Samson Itodo, is the executive director of Yaga Africa and also a lawyer. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. Let me begin with you, Mr. Itodo. Uh, you're one of those, in fact, you're part of the civil society organizations who went to court to sue uh, the National Assembly over... Uh, the uh, nomination of Ms. Onoche, now that she has been rejected, what is your view and what's your take? Well, thank you very much, um, Sheon. Um, we received this news of the rejection of um, Loretta Onoche um, with a deep sense of, um, you know, appreciation to, and recognition to the Senate committee um, for heeding the call of Nigerians, because Nigerians spoke and they rejected this, um, this, this nomination. But we wished that, you know, the Senate um, um, had rejected her for the, the reasons that, um, you know, were stated in the petition, that she was a member of a political party, um, as, as well as, um, you know, issues relating to federal character principle. But, but you know, we were on this show last week, and I, I did, and, and we did appeal to, to the chairman of the Senate committee that they reject this nominee because it's a violation of the Constitution, and it will undermine the independence of INEC and the integrity of our electoral process. And so we're glad that, um, you know, the Senate has rejected her, her nomination in the interest of our electoral our electoral process. It now behoves on the president, you know, to re-nominate an individual. But in this case, since a female um, nominee was rejected, we urge the president to replace the Loretta Onoche with another female nominee who is not partisan, who is not, who does not have um, questionable character and who has, you know, the requisite capacity because there are lots of women in this country who can provide leadership 
um, as national commissioners of the Independent National Electoral Commission. So this is victory for democracy and celebrate the Nigerians, the Nigerian youth, the Nigerian women, and all the stakeholders that rose and spoke out against this aberration of our constitution. But we are glad that you know the Senate committee and the Senate has defended the constitution, even though I would say that they gave some political reasons, but it is very, very clear that beyond the, the federal character principle that they, um, that they relied on, perhaps there are other issues that, that were contained in that petition that are substantive enough um, to provide justification for their decision. So let me go to Mr. Musa. In the report uh, submitted by the Senate uh, uh, Committee Chair on INEC, Senator Kabiru Gaya, let me read a portion to you, Mr. Musa. Uh, it says, the committee is unable to recommend Ms. Loretta Onoche for confirmation as a National Electoral Commissioner for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, but would rather recommend to the Senate to request that the President makes another nomination. You are one of those who defended uh, the President's position on Ms. Onoche. This is not the first time that Ms. Onoche is being rejected. Now the position of the committee is the President to uh, submit another nomination. What's your reaction now? Well, um, let me just uh, first uh, correct the, uh, the impression that this is not the first time the nomination is being rejected. I think this is the first time. The, 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 since when the names were read the other time, all of them, I think apart from the chairman, no, no decision was taken in all of them. So this is the first time her nomination is being rejected. But uh, I think I feel vindicated and uh, uh, in the fact that um, the committee uh, is able to establish the fact that the president uh, has not breached the constitution based on the allegation made by PDP and uh, uh, other civil society groups that um, Ms. Onoche is a member of uh, uh, All Progressives Congress. Uh, so that being the case, uh, uh, we, we are satisfied. And uh, you know, this is, uh, this is democracy. Like I said the other day, we never know what will be the position of the Senate. And uh, it turns out that uh, in their wisdom, uh, they found that uh, because of the provision of Section 14 of the Constitution, that uh, uh, the two of them that to represent the South, South shouldn't be coming from the same state, which uh, I think is, is a valid reason. Even though um, Ms. Onoche in her defense that day, she said that uh, uh, Mrs. Abamuche is uh, representing uh, Cross River State. But I think uh, the Senate have a better information and they confirm that uh, she's from Delta State. So, uh, she represents Delta State. So uh, in, the, in the wisdom of the Senate, uh, they don't think it is proper for the two uh, people that to represent the South-South, all of them to come from the same state. Uh, that, that, that's commendable. And uh, uh, we also, this is the victory of democracy. This is commendable for also the president for uh, uh, playing by the rule. Uh, I think um, if this uh, is uh, communicated to him, he will act accordingly and get another person who will be there. But also we have to congratulate Ms. Onoche because uh, this has shown that uh, she's vindicated, she's not a member of the APC, and uh, all the character assassination that has been going around by the members of the PDP who wanted to say all, uh, to question her character and other things, that has been confirmed by the Senate that she's not what they uh, presented her to be. I think that is uh, enough consolation for her. And uh, I know her to be a passionate woman who wants to, who have a belief in this country, who want to see good for the country. And uh, she's serving the president now. And uh, I'm, I pray that the president in, uh, will find another position for her why she will be able to serve uh, the country better than why she's serving the country now. Let me go back to uh, Mr. Itodo. Uh, we've seen a history of uh, the president uh, representing rejected nominees. Uh, and uh, do you suppose that the president might do the same in the case of Ms. Onoche? I think that it will be unfortunate and perhaps to say that um, it will be an, uh, a, a valuation of the Constitution 
um, if the president attempts to represent her. Um, because in actual fact, uh, and I'll be, I'll be shocked if the president re represents her because he will be joking with the 2023 elections. And, you know, the president on several occasions has commented that he is committed to electoral reforms and he wants to leave a legacy of an electoral process that delivers elections that, um, you know, um, inspire the confidence of the people. And one way to do that is in his appointment into the Electoral Commission. And, and that's why we had challenged this appointment of, of Loretta Onyeche, that it, it, was, it, it was in dissonance with, you know, his rhetoric uh, on, uh, on uh, delivering electoral reforms uh, and credible elections to Nigeria. You can't populate an electoral commission with people who have clear partisan leanings and expect that citizens and stakeholders will have confidence in the electoral commission. By all standards, that appointment was an assault on the independence of, of INEC if it had sailed through. So he, he shouldn't violate the Constitution. The, the, this controversy is needless. There are women from the south-south region of Nigeria who have competence, who have, you know, who are non-partisan, so he should represent them. And I want to urge the president um, that in the interest of his legacy that he wants to leave for Nigerians, if you want Nigerians to remember him as that president that protected the fidelity of our constitution, that also ensured that the electoral process was fireproof, devoid of any form of irregularity or, or mismanagement, he should, he should reappoint a woman who is non-partisan, who has the requisite capacity and also has impeccable character. And there are women in the South South region of Nigeria, a lot of women in millions. All, All right. he needs to That's do is to identify these women and appoint them. All right. So I'd like to, uh, because one of the major issues you and some of your colleagues in the civil society organization raised was the partisanship or the alleged partisanship of Ms. Onoche. But the Senate does look like they've said that is not a basis. And because of what they gave in the report, it does look like a uh, senator said the woman is not partisan. The only reason w they gave for being rejected is that she does not meet up with the federal character. And that is not a fault. That is a fault of the appointor. Mm. Uh, absolutely, Shane. Uh, and, I, and I really want us as a nation, you know, to reflect on this incident. Um, and one thing we have learned is the Constitution is actually silent on the, on the time frame um, that someone who previously is a member of a political party who denounces the membership can be appointed into the Electoral Commission. Sherwin, if you recall, the, eighth, the Ninth National Assembly is considering a bill, um, you know, that, that, um, that sets a timeline for resident electoral commissioners or national commissioners who post um, INEC, when they leave INEC, what's the duration of time that they have to stay before they can contest for office? And I think that as the Senate and the National Assembly is reviewing the Constitution, there is need to revisit or review Section 156 of the Constitution that says, yes, um, even though someone it must not be a member of a political party, if the person denounces their membership of a political party or resigns their membership of a political party today and they are appointed tomorrow, um, can they be appointed into the Electoral Commission? Now, this, this sort of gap that we have, we have identified within our law provides us as an opportunity now that the, the Constitution has been amended for the Senate and the National Assembly to set a timeline that, yes, you can, if you're a member of a po political party and you denounce your membership, um, you cannot be appointed into INEC until after, perhaps, say, 10 or, or 5 years. That way it addresses, you know, ethical, moral issues and also perception that citizens have. And you know for sure when you're dealing with elections and, and, and electoral integrity is about perception. If people perceive 
um, a managers of election and election administrators as people who have been who have won um, you know closings of particular political parties i think it will threaten and undermine acceptability of electoral outcome and this is the point that we make strongly and we hope that we um, the stakeholders the president and national assembly um, have learned from this experience um, and see how the opportunity it presents us we address the gap within our law uh, uh, Senator Musa, um, with what the senator said today, that Ms. Onoche's rejection is based on the fact that uh, it does not meet up with a federal character, which is not uh, none of our, uh, of our uh, uh, fault. Uh, she being appointed, I mean, she's been nominated by the president. But does it call to question the issue of due diligence from the presidency side of, uh, of the divide? Because uh, shouldn't the presidency know that there is an existing representation of Delta State on the board of INEC? You see, the, the issue is not that uh, the Constitution did not say that uh, uh, each state should have a representation. No. It only said that uh, the, the geographical spread is 12 commissioners which helps geographical spread. And uh, uh, since the Constitution did not recognize six geopolitical zones, we have been making the nomination based on two from each zone. Now, the issue is that whether appointment of two people from the same states to represent that zone breach the issue of, uh, the, uh, issue of federal character. As at now, in the opinion of the Senate, it does. Then, but we don't know, because Ms. Onoche's um, um, argument is that um, Mrs. Abamuche is, is being nominated from Re Cross River State because her husband is from Cross Rivers. So if really she's from Cross Rivers, if she's, her nomination in her CV, she's claiming to be from Cross Rivers, then certainly maybe the Senate uh, is, is strong. They were misinformed in taking that decision. Then if she is claiming um, Delta State, as far as the Constitution is concerned, there is, it has not said that um, in the nomination, two people cannot represent a particular state. Of course, we may expect that the spread should be uh, from one state to another. And in any case, that is the importance of the Senate. It is not expected that the president is going to be an infallible. In, in his uh, duties, he may be found to have done some of the things that are not the way they ought to be done, like this issue of Section 14. This is why the Senate is there to check and see whether it is right to be done or not. If in the, they check and see that there is a problem somewhere, then it's for them to say, no, Mr. President, this ought not to be done this way. And that is what they have done. So as, as far as I'm concerned, this is the beauty of the democracy. The president has exercised his constitutional power of making the nomination. Then the Senate has exercised its constitutional duty of either confirming or rejecting. And in, in doing that, they have said that they are, they, are make, they are basing their decision based on the provision of the constitution, which they have sworn to uphold. And the president also made the nomination based on the powers conferred on him by the constitution. So for me, for me, I think it is, it is part of the democratic process when things like this happen. Uh, it is not a matter of whether there is due diligence or no due diligence. As long as the Constitution has not clearly said that two, out of the 12 commissioners, two cannot come from the same state, you cannot say the president in his duty was, uh, was, has, has fallen to, 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 to carry out due diligence in his appointment. In his wisdom, as long as he appoint two people from a particular geopolitical zone, be they, whether they are from the same state or not, he believes he has complied with the provision of the federal character. All right. Then All right. in the wisdom of the Senate, they say, no, he has not. So, so be it. So it's now for the president to now uh, act accordingly. But where there is a conflict between the two of them, the Constitution has given the Supreme Court the, the, the power to now interpret and give us clear interpretation. 
But for now, no, right. neither the so, Senate nor the President nor me can interpret the Constitution. Uh, something, let me ask you, because there is a dilemma here. If you look at the history of those who have represented the uh, South South region in INEC as national commissioners, from uh, we have had Akwaibom, uh, Mr. Opo, uh, Opo, from Cross River, we've had uh, Mr. Unsa. That was in 2003, 2008. Ms. Abamuje Umbu, 2017 to date. From Edo, we've had Ms. Tema Remiren, who is uh, also had a Delta parentage, but represented Edo. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Leki also represented Edo. From River State, Mr. Kugbara and Dr. Igbani had represented River State. There are now arguments as to Bayosa and Delta State, they've never had representation. And that's why I asked you that question, because of the issue of parentage, uh, citizen, and uh, uh, indigenship, these issues that have come up again, whether or not the president might rethink this matter and say, look, Mr. Bamushe probably would have been represented across River State. Well, um, Shion, I think that um, this has been um, a long-standing debate, and it actually impacts on the Constitution and, and this whole um, concept of indigenship or, or, or citizenship. I, I think women should have a right to choose um, a state of um, representation or state of origin. If you're married from another state, um, you're at liberty to choose any state that you should be at liberty to choose any state that you um, you identify with. And that has been, um, you know, the advocacy. And in this case, um, in the eighth national eighth assembly, she was she was confirmed as a representative from Delta State. And for the other two states who have not had representation, um, I think the president, there's a call on the president, uh, you know, to, to, to rethink um, the, 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 his renomination. Uh, and in this case, he should look at the states that have not had representation. And if he does so, he does so as, as a courageous leader, as a leader who is fulfilling a constitutional obligation. Um, that a, a section of our society and a section of our country should not feel marginalized. And so these states that have not had representation, he should represent, um, appoint people or nominate people, um, a woman in, in, from, from, from one, of those, one of those states. But, but Shemu, you know, yeah. we can't end this show if we don't appreciate the Nigerian people. If you are losing hope um, about our democracy, let this action, um, you know, that the Senate took based on the pushback from citizens inspire you. Uh, um, uh, and please, let's continually knock on the doors of our legislators. All right. All they are right. our employees. We need to, so we let's need keep to, knocking on their doors yeah. and placing We need to wrap up this uh, segment, something. Uh, let me allow Sunisi Musa to uh, respond quickly to this matter. The Senate has asked the president to nominate another person. Uh, do you see that happening, or do you see the president representing Ms. Onoche? Well, I, I don't want to preempt the president, but uh, it, uh, it's uh, purely within the um, uh, uh, powers of the president to do what he thinks. If the president decides to renominate uh, Ms. Onoche and it, uh, it found out that and it is true that uh, Ms. Aba, Mrs. Abamuchi is also from Delta, then there is a conflict between the executive and the legislature. This now ignites the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court as what is the accent of the federal character. But one thing that I'm not comfortable with is this issue of saying federal commissioners, national commissioners in INEC are representing states. No, they are not representing states. They are there to conduct elections for the country. So uh, the issue of representing a particular state does not arise. They are there to help of them who we see as the most honest people to spearhead the election, uh, uh, election that will give us leaders that will uh, lead the country. So if we continue to start uh, this divisive issue of whether somebody is from Jigawa State, tomorrow we need somebody from Kano, next day, I don't think it will augur well for us. Of course, for a places like uh, right. South, South, where you have different um, uh, tribes, I think it would be good for the appointor to look at the other way to uh, see that people that of different uh, the tribes that have not tested, uh, appointed into the position appointed. All right. So th but thank you so much, as soon as you... a politics of present. All right. Uh, as soon as you... thank you so much, uh, representing or speaking um, as an APC member and a lawyer, and uh, something it told her, a civil society person and a lawyer. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us tonight.